Today we celebrate our patronal feast, the solemnity of St. Mary the Virgin, the mother of Jesus. As we enter into this special day of worship, we hear Dr. Hogan play Antithophon III, Nigra Sum, by composer Marcel Dupree. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full, full of grace, grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother, Mother of God, 
Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, so that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now Now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. you. Let us pray. O God, you have taken to yourself the blessed Virgin Mary, mother of your incarnate Son. Grant that we who have been redeemed by his blood may share with her the glory of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. The word of the Lord. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. I will bless the Lord at all. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. 
reading from the book of Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir, through God, the word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on, his lowly, on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is His name. His mercy is for those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with His arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. There is a sculpture entitled Mary as Prophet by the artist Margaret Adams Parker 
that sits in the chapel garden at Virginia Theological Seminary. In the beginning of my time at seminary, I would pass the sculpture on the way to morning prayer with curiosity, but with little time to spend at the feet of the two characters displayed in the art. It wasn't until an evening walk that I sat and discovered, much to my surprise, that the figure I had assumed to be Mary was not Mary, but Elizabeth. Wise and confident in her demeanor, her stature brought lower by the years of her life as she reaches out her hand to a younger figure who appears uncomfortable and uncertain. This younger figure has her arms wrapped around herself, standing tall but reluctant. Her facial expression is ambiguous. On the other hand, she appears to be frightened but a closer look will reveal a hope in her eyes. This is Mary, our patron saint, Mary as prophet, Mary as she proclaims the Magnificat, Mary as she begins a revolution. As the God-bearer, she has been venerated since the days of the early church. In Orthodox churches, an image of Mary is placed above the altar which depicts her in Oran's position with the Christ child within her, a kind of priest presiding over the incarnation itself. In an effort to make sense of her being chosen as the one to bring the incarnate Christ into the world, some theologies has, have characterized her with quasi-divine superhuman qualities. Others have revered her as a kind of prototype for the meek and mild, at times inoculating the agency by which she says yes to her vocation and the strength of her prophetic speech. Modern theology has sought to reclaim her agency and in the words of the Magnificat, elevate her power and her hunger for justice. The same hunger that echoes in the words of Jesus later in the Gospel of Luke. It's easy to say that Mary is complicated, and like Parker's artistic representation, it's important not to overlook her complexity in an effort to reduce her to one convenient characterization. Mary was a woman, materially located in a particular time and place. She was a human being with just as much complexity as you and me just as much reluctance, fear, and vulnerability, just as much strength, hope, and fortitude. She is not a mere vessel, and yet she is not an agent independent of the Holy Spirit. It's curious that her prophetic words occur before the birth of Jesus, in the midst of uncertainty, when all she has to go by are the words of an angel and the stories passed down from generation to generation about a God who enters into the human experience. The Magnificat is Mary's recounting of God's relationship with Israel. Mary was a Jew, a descendant of the many ancestors who found themselves experiencing the divine presence and revelation of God throughout the whole of their history as a people opening the womb of Sarah to give birth to a nation, setting the Hebrew people free from the bondage of Egypt, the prosperous kingdom of Israel under David's rule. The list goes on. These stories were a memory planted in the hearts of the Jewish people, distilling an important truth that we worship a God who does great things, who keeps his promises. You see, Mary's song of praise is not for a God who sits idly by while the world is left in the hands of the few at the expense of the many. Mary magnifies a God who intervenes in this life, who enters into material existence, who turns our world upside down to initiate a different kind of kingdom, bringing down the powerful from their thrones lifting up the lowly, feeding the hungry, 
sending the rich away empty. These are not metaphors. They're the material expression of God's mighty works of justice, a reversal of an economy where the powerful few exploit the vulnerable many. The Magnificat is a bold declaration of what God has done and a prophetic vision of what God is doing and is going to do. Like me, you may have encountered a kind of I'll fly away theology of the gospel at some point in your life. You know how the old song goes, some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away. The universe, it goes something like this, that the universe is going to hell in a handbasket on account of human sin, and that Jesus came to die in our place as God's own son so that if we believe in him, we'll be forgiven of that sin so that we can go to heaven when we die. Now, I do believe in the blessed reality of heaven and in the saints who join God at the end of their time on earth. But the problem with this being the whole of our theology is that we miss out on the memory of Scripture, of God's intervening in this world, showing up in our lives and in our communities, and particularly among the humble and the lowly. Mary has her sight set on this memory of what God has done and her hopes set on what God will do. And she opts in to the call to materialize that hope, to bear God in herself, and to bring the incarnate Christ into the world, in the flesh. We venerate Mary because she did what no one else could do. And yet we are called to do the same to bear God and to incarnate Christ in our community and our world. To say yes to this call is to accept the responsibility of our vocation as members of the body of Christ here and now, to plant the memory of God's word in our hearts, to set our hope on what God is doing in this world, and to be a part of that work by materializing justice in our communities. Breaking down structures of injustice, reallocating resources to serve those most vulnerable, lifting up the lowly and filling the hungry with good things. If Mary's song sounds like God is a revolutionary, it's because she believes he is. I don't want to reduce Mary to one characterization. She can be both a prophet and the mother of God. And by our participation in the church and as members of the body of Christ, she is the mother of us all. But for me and our time and place, I find comfort in our blessed mother as a reluctant prophet, the one depicted by Parker, full of fear, yet willing to stand and proclaim the memory of God's mighty acts willing to bear the word made flesh, and willing to participate in a glorious revolution. She is a woman full of the Holy Spirit, an example of what it is to speak truth to power, to challenge injustice no matter the cost. Let the vulnerability of her humanity be a reminder to you that God uses the weak things of this world to shame the strong. Let her words encourage and provoke you that we worship a God who does great things, a God who keeps his promises. Standing, we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the, Almighty, the Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven and earth, earth of all that is seen, seen and unseen. unseen. We, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only, only Son of God, God eternally begotten of the Father, God, God from God, God, light from light, true God from true God, God, God begotten and not made, 
and of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the Gospel of John, Jesus promised his followers that God would send them an advocate, the Holy Spirit, who would be with them forever. Leaning on the promise of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray now together, Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. For the sake of your church and its leaders, for our bishops, Sam and Ann, as they guide us through these unprecedented times, we pray, Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. For the sake of our nation and its leaders, for our president, governor, and mayors, and all those in authority whose decisions will shape our coming days, we pray, Come, Holy Spirit. For the sake of our reeling world, for the hundreds of thousands who have died from COVID-19 and the millions sickened by it, for the millions who have lost their jobs and their livelihoods, we pray, Come, Holy Spirit. For the sake of our black siblings who cry out for a just world, who grieve too many sacred lives cut short, who demand an honest reckoning with our sinful history and a commitment to anti-racism every day moving forward, we pray, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. For the sake of our community and those among us who are hungry, homeless, scared, and lonely, and those who among us have enough and the means to share, we pray, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. For the sake of those in our community who today are suffering from illness, pain, and insecurity, and need your healing presence, remembering especially Jerry, Jesse, Betty, Helen, Linda, Haley and Michael, Katie, Elizabeth, Bill, Becca, Mary, Margaret, Khaleesi, Christy, Al, Tom, Rick, Mary, Dan, Paul, Bobby, Paige, Ann, Art, Tom and Wendy, Sarah, Barbara, we pray, come, Holy Spirit. For the sake of those whose absence we now grieve, that even now you enfold them in your loving grace, remembering especially Peter, we pray, come, Holy Spirit. In Acts, we read that the Spirit Jesus promised came like tongues of fire and a rushing wind. Come again, Holy Spirit, on your people. Come again, Holy Spirit, to renew, strengthen, and comfort us. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace. Peace be with you. God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it right, is right to give him thanks. thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only son, to be born for us who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin 
and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember, we remember his, his death, death, we, we proclaim, proclaim his, his resurrection, we await, we await his coming, coming in glory. glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine, thine is the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory, and the glory forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Alleluia. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Lord Christ, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to at least come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my being. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until, by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom an unending peace. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have, you have graciously, graciously accepted, accepted us, us as, as living members of your, your Son, Son, our Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ. And, you and you have fed, fed us, us with spiritual food, food and in the, the sacrament, sacrament of his body and blood. And blood. Send, Send us, us now, now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen.
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.